We're going to the bathhouse. Surprisingly small bath, all things considered. <laughs> uh, you know, in, in a lot of the traditional baths, they just used olive oil instead of water because they didn't. <laughs> so they would just rub you with olive oil and then they take these little sticks <laughs> and they would just scrape the olive oil off of you. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> You mean that there's an entire pool of olive oil? Yeah, just oh, it grease everywhere. <laughs> and that, that's why they called it grease. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember. Dun, dun, dun. Which, I remember this fact so the well because you know. as a kid it fascinated me, but I don't remember which culture uh, it was. You're gonna get historians so hard. I in the know, comments, dude. I'm they're so gonna sorry, come at you guys. With all their Wikipedia entries that they're experts in. <laughs> I, what a horrifying dude, sentence. I don't like it. And then, there, there, and, and then a lot of cultures did, did milk baths. Milk baths are really common. Especially yeah. like donkey milk. Yeah. I think that was egypt -y, but... It's also just a really good visual to recreate. Because someone just like, just in like the layer of white and all that. Yeah, yeah. I've got some art I can share later. <laughs> Wait, did I already show that to you? The cats in the milk bath? No. I, I did. <laughs> There's some very talented artists. I, just, I, I think it's a nice idea, but I think about getting out of the milk bath and just having the milk be like a slightly tinged color because you just took a bath in milk and all your dirt's in there uh, now and just how gross I think that is. I don't even like people dunking their cookies in milk because I can't really deal with this. Oh, you don't like dunking in milk? <laughs> no, I don't. Well, it's just like cereal. It makes me upset. Like the, the, mil the milk becoming flavored afterwards is I like don't drink bonus. the milk when I eat cereal. What? No. What? It's gross. No. What? <laughs> so I use very little milk because I don't want to waste it. I'm just imagining you like getting miso soup and you like scrape all the stuff out with a spoon and, and eat it, and then you leave the, the cup of soup. <laughs> See, that, that's not the same. I know, but it's. I mean, you leave the milk. Is cereal a soup? I'm devastated right now. <laughs> that's like the point. You get like cinnamon toast crunch or like cocoa pebbles or some. Uh, Cocoa Krispies are better, rice or Cocoa Rice Krispies. I don't like something. any of those. I don't like, like cereal. They, they much. flavor the milk. It becomes like chocolate milk or cinnamon milk. You don't like cinnamon though, but like you. I like you have to corn pops. Milk. Just pour in less milk if you don't want that much milk. But like <laughs> the milk's supposed to go with it. I like blueberry. It's not there just to moisten the cereal. And corn pops and <laughs> Eggo waffle cereal. I wasn't. I wasn't. This is how we're starting this episode. Trips. I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> Anyway, I'm horrified by the olive oil thing because I, I hate feeling oily in any context, so I don't want to fucking dive in it. <laughs> you can use oil to clean your your skin. I use it to wash my face sometimes. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like these things you're saying to me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm immediately hit by a wall of humid warmth and horrifying revelations about cereal. Uh, steam <laughs> wafting out through the open door. Steamed milk. Oh, well, well that, that's actually a thing, so that's okay. Yeah. No, that's just... That's, that's, yes. I follow the wolf inside, my skin immediately growing sticky and hot, making me wish that it was a swimming pool instead of what I assume was a giant hot tub. The wolf starts to strip off his clothing. It worked! The sensor worked! Damn it! We don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to block the text with, the, with editing afterwards, and I don't have to do a lot of work later. <laughs> All that took was somebody else doing a lot of work in advance, who wasn't me, so it's like getting it for free. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. I've been needing this all my all day. Also, excuse my nudity, but the water isn't kind to clothing. Otherwise, I'd keep the, the underwear on. I shrug. It's not like I haven't seen it before. <laughs> right. <laughs> the wolf lays his clothing down on one of the benches, his nude, sweaty form obscuring, obscured slightly by the steam. He stretches, arching his back, his thick body thinning out a bit as he does. His dick also sticks out quite a bit, even though I might have seen it before. The shameless display is a bit much, and I have to look away while I slowly strip off my own robe. You're joining me, yes? Yeah. Good. I think you'll enjoy this. It's very hot. But you... <laughs> crazy. But you get used to it. Amicus walks up to the edge of the pool. There are two methods. Either get in slowly or all at once. And with that, the wolf jumps into the pool, practically cannonballing into the center and setting up a huge wave that washes over the sides. The water that creeps up onto my feet is hot enough to make me flinch. Amicus comes back up, his fur plastered to his face as he gasps and let out, lets out a strained yell that makes it sound like he's in pain. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. 
Just imagining fucking dog noises. <laughs> Are you all right? I walk up. The <laughs> Stupid. This is really stupid. I've said visual was not really visual. I walk I walk up to the edge, feeling the hot water under my feet. Fine, fine, just getting used to it. And now I am. Amicus grins up at me. I stand there in my underwear, frowning down at the water. Come in, it feels good. That didn't look like it felt good. Quit being such a flower and get in. It's only the first few seconds that are painful. <laughs> Flower, the main insult used by the wolves when attacking someone's masculinity. <laughs> well, I guess you do have a really low pain tolerance, so... <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I start to tip a, a, dip a toe in. Hey! Amicus glares up at me, then grins. I know that well look by, that look well by now. Hey, don't! The wolf glides up to the edge of the pool with only half of his muzzle sticking out of the water like an ominous furry shark fin. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a hungry, hungry hippo right now. <laughs> I start to move back, and that's when Amicus suddenly rises out of the water, stepping out onto an underwater bench along the edge of the pool that I hadn't seen. He wraps his arms around me, his hot, fur-plastered body squeezing against me for a moment then squeezing even harder as he physically lifts me off the ground and falls back into the pool. I only have a moment to try and fight the wolf off, uselessly pushing at his bulk before I pl I'm plunged into steaming hot water. For a moment, I wonder if I'm going to boil alive, but as soon as Amicus lets me go and my head breaks to the surface, I can already feel the sting, the sting wearing off into a pleasant warmth. Part of me was worried that, like, they're... Their temps are higher, and that you were just gonna boil alive. <laughs> like and it's die. a huge mistake about, yeah. their, about their physical tolerances. Exactly. <laughs> I cough a few times, making a face at the salt taste, the salty tasting water, spitting it out. <laughs> Not so bad if you do it all at once. I spit out more water. Ah, bad taste. Don't worry, it's just the minerals in the water. I shove a wave of water into Amicus's face, sending it right into his open mouth. He coughs and spits, choking on the water I'd just forcibly slammed down his throat. Ugh! You ass! The wolf paws the water out of his eyes, looking ready to try and splash me as well. He sees me at the ready, though, hands up to my chest and ready to send another wave into his face. Well, that's enough roughhousing, I guess. Stuff like that is best left for the lake. Hey, you started it. Amicus ignores me, instead moving to sit on the underwater bench. I do the same, sitting a foot away from the wolf, enveloping my face in the steam that rises off the water. Doesn't that feel good? Now that I'm actually paying attention to the sensation of the water, I have to agree. The heat seems to seep through my skin and into the muscle, sending a pleasant shiver up my spine even though I'm completely warm. Yeah. I need to do this more often. All of this official business nonsense is starting to weigh on my mental capacities. Is it really nonsense? For the most part, it really is. So much useless etiquette and protocol. Sometimes, I completely understand what it is Cassius dislikes about the current way of things. What way of things? Oh, just the way politics work. Never saying what we're actually thinking, using coded language, it slows things down. But I know that there's a reason for it. Keeps things civil and peaceful. Mostly. And Cassius would do away with that? He would do away with many things, current political protocol being one of them. It's one of the main reasons he's so popular. He's going to drain the swamp, if you will. <laughs> I wonder what uh, year this game was written. <laughs> no. Well, you seem to. <laughs> they drain the swamp. Is that a, is that a phrase somebody used? That was uh, Trump's slogan. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, do you forget? I I, I try not to remember. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's God, that was like. I thought you were making a Shrek now, right? reference. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Lord Farquaad yeah. wants to train the swamp. Yeah, I mean... 
<laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh my god. I feel like watching that movie might be traumatic now. <laughs> Just horrifying. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that at all. <laughs> oh fuck! Hey, it's the song I like. When well, you gotta you... learn on piano so you can impress people. I, I never. I, do you know how big pianos are? Wait, do we still have one? Actually, <laughs> your brother has one. He doesn't use. I, did he still have it? He like bought it and then was like, a, and then just like got bored of it. His husband bought it for him and he never opened it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that's ADHD and hobbies. <laughs> so that's how those combine. You get really excited for a week about things sometimes, and then it's, maybe not the next week. It's okay. I have a guitar, and it's not even here. So it's not even here now. No, it's not even in this oh. house. Yeah. Well, you seem to you seem to kind of agree with it. Getting things done without all of that official business nonsense in the way, in the way could be. Blah, blah, blah. Getting things done without all that official business nonsense in the way could be a good thing. Hmm. Amicus sinks lower into the water until he's up to his neck. Remember that story I told you about Drusus and Mira? Yeah. Well, whether that story is true or not, he was the one that started the way... He was the one that started the way we do things to this day. Before him, well, we had a string of populist emperors, and the results were not great from what I've read. Honestly, I completely understand what what it ta uh, what it is that makes Cassius appealing to the people, and it's something that I sometimes want to do myself. The only thing holding me back is history. Time and time again, whenever a leader like Cassius has come around, it only results in a weak, isolated empire. Well, from what little I've heard, isn't that how it is now? Well, yes. But that's because we've never fully transitioned into an outward-looking and outreaching empire. Drusus started it, but it's taken us 10,000 years to get here. It was much worse back then. And that's when Cass that's what Cassius wants to get back to. This makes me want to learn more about Roman history, but like without getting into any of the creepy MRA circles <laughs> because like there's a lot of people that have uh, <coughs> there's a lot of people that have fucked up incentives to learn about Roman history. And I mean, so you, you could gets, just go... You're like, getting sucked into shitty places. Let's just go to the library. We could rent, like, a book. A book? From... Books? Fr from, like... Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your... They don't, even, they don't like, even have animated wolves or anything. <laughs> uh, I was gonna I was gonna make a joke about how, like, look at all those books behind you right now. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of them do have wolves in them, so... <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> like, not not zero. Definitely not zero. Like, let's let's... This is a stack of... Yep. Oh, wait. I see furry stuff. This is literally a stack of three books, which is Fur Piled Volume 1. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, The Dog Days of Summer by Blotch. And then Volume 18 of Beastars is just on a stack on my fucking table behind me right now. Uh, fuck. So many wires. And, have, have and a whole bunch of down. weird <laughs> indie shit I lent to you. Yeah. And some of it that I own... Yes. I also own a bunch of weird indie shit. But you did but you did you did teach me about Silver Sprocket, which I did not know existed, and I have been I'm so a proud patron of you. repeatedly. I intend to take some of the final steps so that we may join the other siblings on the journey to parenthood. Oh, so that's the goal for everyone, to become a parent? Yes, and to continue the spread of our culture beyond the galaxy. I, I love hearing about spreading culture. It's really good for the... Uh, for the cultures the, uh, the you cultures. spread to. <laughs> spread uh, right over them. So what makes you a parent? When we can travel to other galaxies in a practical manner. Oh, so why not just use the stretch drive for that? It is not possible to harness enough power to use the stretch drive for such distances. The parents have a different method, but they haven't told us how, obviously. Hmm. So are you close to doing it? To intergalactic travel? No. Is anyone? Well, there are rumors the Chemians are on the verge of it. It wouldn't surprise me. It's assumed that they already know how to use their own stretch drive. This talk about the stretch drive reminds me of something. So, when I was out serving Cass, Amicus growls softly in his throat as I remind him. Well, 
they were talking about stuff about the stretch drive, st uh, stretch drive depletion or whatever. Oh, yeah. So apparently, no one knows why your parents stopped talking to you guys, and Virginia was saying that you might never leave the star system again. Oh, I frowned at him. Well, that was rather presumptuous of her. Is it true? Well, no. I mean, sure, it doesn't happen often, but they stopped immediately after father's death. There's no other explanation than that our parent knew there would be issues with the Emperorship. The stretch and contact with our parent will be reestablished once I become Emperor. I promise you that, Marco. Amica says it with his usual confidence, but that doesn't really settle the anxiety in my stomach. Yeah, because he's always confident about everything. <laughs> and he's been wrong a lot. <laughs> yeah. His track record's not great. Yeah. Do you have anything that you think is the cause for the the uh, the parents going silent? Like, um, why, like why they would abandon the wolves? I mean, it sounds like so far we haven't really been that great about uh, the our, our children and how we treat them. It yeah. could be something to do with that. Um... The timing is specifically that it, it was right when the Emperor died. Well, I mean, I, I definitely am, like, there's, you know, uh... Rome, do Rome doesn't, well, Rome exists. I just mean, like, the, the uh, Empire of Rome <laughs> does not exist anymore, so I already foresee, like, some troubles with this. <laughs> like, having them be compared to Rome in general is just, like, not, uh... It doesn't forebode well for their future. <laughs> but, uh... I just think it has something to do with like their politics and the way they are dealing with other cultures right now. I get the impression that maybe a lot of the other cultures are actually more um, ahead in their thinking in regards to how they deal with each other and they're spreading outwards. I think we're kind of enclosed on this planet. I think we're kind of stuck in our in our little. I think and then the, the, and then us being like Roman like this almost makes it seem like we're we're, we're trapped in time. Yeah, I think we're kind of. Um, we, sim we It feels like we simultaneously traveled to the future and the past. Yeah, no, like de retro definitely. Retro futurist space wolves. <laughs> well, it's like, in, in <laughs> I like this. I like the phrase. It should be your new band name. <laughs> that's that's my new indie rock band, folk punk, the, the retro futurist space wolves. I'll come on stage with the tambourine. <laughs> the uh, but no, I think I, I think just us seeing this palace and us like it is very old school. All of this is very like archaic. Yeah. And 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 you know like that. That's why it suits the Roman theme so well, but I just think I think it shows that we're we're not developing. Yeah, it also comes with a concern to like just this aesthetic. I mean, because I'm kind of just branching off what you said that like there's a horror to the idea of seeing a, a race that gets more advanced and then doesn't come with like the presumed social progress you would hope yeah. would come with that. I think we're stagnating. <laughs> instead, you're like, oh no. <laughs> and also get the they impression, suck. seeing this palace makes me, and in the way that they treat us as pets, although Amicus is very nice to us, yeah. I get the impression that they treat other cultures like shit. <laughs> yeah. It makes me scared to go to other parts of this planet because I get the impression that there's, or that there's going to be other, and then them talking about the, um, the Chemians and like Lux being like this place that's all poor and sad. I just get the impression we're not like doing great in our due diligence of being uh being like diplomatically spreading intelligence throughout the universe. I don't think we're really caring about that the way we're supposed to. Yeah. Let's see. Do you... not if there's anything else I want to say. Anyway. <laughs> I was trying to remember if there was any more floating topics. I sigh in frustration, closing my eyes, just like I do this whole playthrough where I have to, like, almost say something, and then I'm like, no, <laughs> can't talk about that. Why is everything so complicated with you? What do you mean? If you just tell me the actual truth about everything that's going on, I wouldn't feel like I'm being hit over the head with something new every other day. Marco, stop worrying. I know things seem unsure, but it's only because of the precarious position our empire is in right now. Once I become emperor, things will settle and we'll figure out how to get you home. You know, you really don't want to have uh, your personal fate <laughs> talking about queer coding and, and stuff again in the story. But like, you really don't want to have your your own uh, future and uh, happiness and rights and so on tied to the idea that a government is going to make progress 
in any kind of reasonable time frame. <laughs> yeah, that's don't... a pretty horrifying thing to trust in. <laughs> I guess just don't count on it. Is what, yeah, is what I would no. say. That's not a it's not a good connection to have, honestly. <laughs> Amicus put, sets a paw on my shoulder, and I turn to look at him. My expression probably still gloomy. I will get you home, Marco. That I promise. And even if the stretch isn't immediately restored, I will find a way, even if it, if it means making some sort of deal with another sibling. Like the Chemians. <laughs> Those fucking Chemians. The stupid, sexy Chemians. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh no, he's hot. At this point in the story, how do you think the story ends? Specifically as in just the binary of does he make it home or not? Um, I, I'm... I have opinions. I, I don't know if I should say them. I almost feel like I'm. I don't want to. I feel like I almost. I feel like I might be right, and I'm gonna spoil it for people. It's. A, I mean, it's a coin toss. I don't know if you can be right or wrong. It's not a spoiler unless you think you already know something you're not supposed to know. Okay, so I think, um, in line with like the tragedy of Rome. Okay, so I think that, um, their dad was a good emperor, right? And he because I, cause I think they kind of allude to that where he was he was he was more kind and Cassius wants to do some undo some of the stuff that he had done right I think the reason that maybe the parents aren't talking to us anymore is because I don't think Amicus becomes emperor I think Cassius does I think something terrible ha happens to Amicus I don't know if we go home I honestly have not thought about that very much at all <laughs> I think we will because if we're I think something bad is going to happen to Amicus, and I think if it does, we're not going to have a reason to be here, so the, there's not really a purpose of us staying here. I think there's going to, at the end, we're going to go back home with like this memory of this great love we had. You think there's an ending like where that. something bad happens to Amicus, but then we get home somehow? I mean, it could be that the tragedy is us having to leave Amicus, which could be the tragedy. I just feel like something bad's like going to happen. Like he dies sending us home or something? Yes, something like this. I'm, I'm just trying to think of the, lo the logistics. I'm like, hmm. Only because... Like I said, like I said, I thought I, I've not been thinking a lot about us getting back home. I'm thinking more so about why I think something bad is going to happen to Amicus because I think <laughs> I think that Cassius is like the he's anytime the, you you're anytime that any narrative makes you like a dog, you're like, does the dog die? Does the dog die? Does well, the dog die? <laughs> Cassius, like Cassius, is going to do well because he's he's very smart. He's the he's the scar of the situation where he's yeah, he's the smarter and brother. Out great for scar. <laughs> Well, I mean, in that one, there's a whole... He comes back, but, I mean, Scar <laughs> does get the kingship for a while. But I think whenever you have a character that's, like, the, the kind of, like, the weaker, smarter one, you're going to underestimate them, but they're always, like, the villain, and they, they end up yeah. doing well. I think... You can, you can definitely tell that Amicus is underestimating him, because he's just assuming he'll win literally every challenge, yeah, which yeah. is, like, narratively, you're like... Mm. And he's he's <laughs> a likable one. Work. He's gonna be better for the kingdom, but he's not gonna be good at doing all the politician bullshit, which is what his brother's really good at, which is why his brother's gonna win. And something bad's gonna happen. Uh, to you, or do you, I, was, uh, I guess you, I guess you're saying he's not gonna win at all, though. But I was I was, for, I was thinking for a second there if you think he's gonna be that one. Uh, not Rowan, I guess. I guess that's an, that was like that was an English king. I think was the one that. Uh, is it Hamlet or something that is like the follow up to that? Or no, it's no, King. King Lear? The King Lear or King Henry? It's like. What the are you Shake about? Shakespeare has a lot of king plays that are hard to remember and I didn't really watch see any of them, but one of them is specifically about like a uh, king that was like basically a pacifist and he was like, he's like relatively wholesome and, and nice and so on, but it wasn't necessarily actually good for like he he wasn't one for all the machinations and backstabbing and so on but it wasn't necessarily helpful for running the kingdom and i think he gets like there's like several coups until he's like executed by his own family and everything so it's like if you like if you don't like there's no escaping the machinations even if you specifically refuse to engage with them I don't know. I, it's, I'm it's, sure it's, it's hard I, to I'm get not. See, once again, the comments are going to roast us. I'm not familiar enough with Shakespeare to tell you which play that is. Yeah, no, I'm not I, a fan. No, I'm literally just like, I watched a video essay once. It was by Bread Sword. <laughs> 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 it might have been the one about uh, Lion King one and a half. <laughs> which talks about Rosencrantz and, which talks about Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, and then by extension other Shakespeare plays. <laughs> but Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are from... Their they're characters from, from their characters from Hamlet, Hamlet. but that but that they get their play own spin-off. Spin yeah, they're that's they not get their own spin-off. Yeah, exactly. It's modern. And I know. I know. A, Taming... and then, and there's a movie that has Tim Roth and that one character actor that's and everything in it. 
The one that plays Commissioner Gordon in the Dark Knight movies. Oh, oh, and oh. And Fifth Fuck. Element villain. Damn it. <laughs> he's like a chameleon. He's, he's, oh my he, gosh. He visibly changes so much. Uh, everyone in the uh, audience is going to hate us for not remembering all these yeah, words no, and Yeah, no, we're names. just name dropping them and half remembering a bunch of things real quick. Just ruining this episode. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> Once like again. The, like the Chemians. Amicus frowns at the last statement. Still, that does set me at ease, and I place my hand on his, uh, on his paw. Thanks, Amicus. Amicus's very serious mood dissipates as his ears come up and he smiles. I said it in his voice for some reason. <laughs> You're, so you're feeling relaxed again. This is why we're here, you know. I smile. Yeah, I guess so. Good. We fall into a bit of a silence then. Then I lean my head against the edge of the pool, letting the warmth take over my body. It makes me feel heavy and tired, but good. My head slips off the ledge a few times as I doze off a bit, each time waking up before my head could go into the water. That's why, you, do people die this way? Like, yeah. That's why you don't drink a bunch of sit in the bathtub. Yeah, they are together at least. Amicus notices the third time this happens. Sleepy? A little. Lean against me so you don't make the bottom of the pool your new bed. I hesitate. Don't worry, we already share the same bed. What's At that point, we might as well just lay against each other naked and wet. <laughs> Amicus stretches an arm over the ledge over the ledge behind my head, not even looking at me as he does. I get the weird feeling I'm in a movie theater and my date just tried to casually rest his arm on the back of my chair, because he did. But my head feels even heavier than the rest of my body, so I give in, letting it rest against Amicus's massive bicep and shoulder. I close my head, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't close your head. There's a lot of good ideas. I close my eyes, then crack them open just a bit to look at Amicus. He seems to be trying to stifle a smile. We've had a few moments like these. At this point, I'm not sure if it's because he likes me or because he, he sees me as some sort of actual pet, like a cat curling up in his lap. He's like, oh, so cute, pat pat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much time to get into thought, though, because I start to fall asleep again. I'm not sure how long I'm asleep, seconds or minutes, but that's when I hear the door open. You rang? <laughs> it's not a loud sound, but Amicus jumps, which makes me jump. We both look at the door. <laughs> like the Kemians. The Pharaoh stands there, his eyes on us, the same smile on his face. Oh, imagine running into you again today. Again, Neferu talks directly to me. Without waiting for an answer, he strides in, boss, paws busily tugging at his loincloth. I'm sorry. I've come to the baths every day for the past week, but I've never encountered anyone. He strips off his loincloth, now only in his undergarments. I was beginning to think it was never put to use. Just waste this energy all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, he starts I mean... to unwrap send of the garments. I found that strange, considering how incredibly relaxing the water is. It's such a great way to clear the mind and meditate. He unwraps his underwear, the cloth tied in a way that looked much more complicated than my own. Not that I mind. I always enjoy good company and conversation. I have just enough time to notice the anatomical differences between Amicus and Neferu before I look away. Feeling awkward staring at someone I barely know. What's the anatomical difference? <laughs> I'll never know. <laughs> so have you heard of a sheath? Oh, so he's uncircumcised. Uh, no. <laughs> oh. Oh, wait, wait. Like a dog? Like yeah, a dog? like a dog. You know how, like, because Amicus's penis is just, it's just a penis. My brain's going back to like. Neferu has like a, a sheath, which is relatively common, you know. But yeah, they they just my, my split brain's going to like two. Bad Dragon catalog. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I think that looks like. This is your reference. <laughs> do we need to Google something? No, do no, we, it's do no. we need help? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I. <laughs> I can do that in my own time. Thank you very much. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm aware. I think. I, I think my brain's got it right. I 
I'll just ask Kiki for her her sack of porn. Hey dog, where's, yeah, where's, where's your where's porn your stack? Let me take a look. <laughs> So, Marco, what do you prefer? <laughs> A or B? <laughs> I'm not sure who he's talking to either. Whether he's moved on from me to Amicus or if he's still exclusively zeroed in on me. Either way, A Amicus answers while I stare at the steamy water. Um, I see. I also enjoy baths. It's just we tend to be so busy these days. Oh, I imagine. Nefera's voice gets closer behind me as he speaks, his soft footsteps barely audible. Being adrift without an emperor can really hamper an empire. At this point, it sounds like Neferu is standing just over me, and I can only imagine what else is just over Do me. Do you look up? Do you look up? <laughs> the choice comes up. <laughs> this is one of the, in a game with barely any choices, this is the choice, and it's important. Uh -huh. It changes the ending. <laughs> <laughs> Do you look at the sheath? <laughs> Amicus oh, is craning his neck, looking up at the jackal. Well, we do have an emperor, just not the official one yet. Indeed. I hear a soft splash next to me, and out of the corner of my eye, I see one of the jackal's legs dip into the water to stand on the bench, followed by the other. Ah, uh, that's nice. I took a rather long walk in the gardens today. It's left my paws rather sore. This is a welcome reprieve. It's good. It's a, it's a good thing Toaster censored this stuff because this would be unreadable. <laughs> yeah. There's two spots. <laughs> hmm. Amicus grunts next to me, then actually pulls me in a bit with his arm. Nefero then gently hops off the bench to submerge himself to his neck. He lets out a soft, drawn out sigh, his eyes closed before he pulls himself onto the bench right next to me. Amicus lets out a sigh of his own, though this one is much shorter and very annoyed sounding. We don't have baths like this in our palace. I might request one, though, once I return home. Hmm. Again, Amicus barely responds, letting out a half-hearted grunt. At this point, the wolf has his arm completely around me, practically pulling me into his chest. It's awkward, and we sit like that for a while, maybe about five minutes before Neferu finally speaks again. So, how long have you been here, Marco? I give a start, then look up at Amicus. One of his eyes twitch, but he gives me a short nod. Uh, two? Week? Again, I hold my breath to stop myself from laughing at my caveman speak. For some reason, it's incredibly hilarious, even when the situation is totally serious. Hmm. <clears throat> so you need permission to speak to me. I did not know that you were so strict with your slaves, Amicus. Amicus coughs in surprise. He's my pet, not a slave. Oh, maybe it's a lingua issue. But from what I've seen, there's very little difference. You do enslave your children after all, no? Amicus, Amicus is quiet for a moment, and I look back at him to see him staring at the jackal, his mouth open. Are you all right? Excuse me, but I'm finding your question a little pointed. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been told our way of speaking can be a bit blunt by your standards, but consider that the topic of slavery is simply always pointed. Well, why don't you? Well, why don't we move to a less pointed topic then? Like the pyramids, which the slaves built. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. So, Marco, what is your species? I must say that I've never seen your kind before. You fucking naked mole rat looking fuck. <laughs> Amicus's arm tightens around my shoulder again, but he doesn't say anything. Staring straight ahead at the other side of the pool. We're getting all wrinkly too, and all like. <laughs> from being in the pool, they're just looking at our skin shrivel up. Like, we're, we look disgusting. I mean, you only get wrinkly on your hands and your feet. I mean, if you're in there long it's enough, who knows? I don't, I don't think your <laughs> arms get wrinkly. Our I've, I've never all, hit is, that level before. Our eyes are all, like, we're all flushed looking. And, like, I just imagine just looking like a hot <laughs> mess in front of these sexy wolf dog people. <laughs> I feel embarrassed for us. We're whoops all ears, because that's the part that changes. Uh, Simeon? The pharaoh chuckles next to me. Do you think the insides of his ears are painted gold or always gold? I feel like they're always gold because I think those markings are permanent. You think he just has markings on him? I mean, he's in the bath with them. I wonder. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, I don't have answers. <laughs> That's just what he looks like. But I'm like, huh. He's got a little nose ring, too, which I really like. He's got a nose ring, and he's also wearing, like, a bracelet hand thing. Look at him pushing up his titties for us. Yeah, no. <laughs> Every single one of his poses is on purpose in a way that Amicus's isn't. <laughs> he's doing JoJo's poses all the time. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely him trying to show off his titties. It means he likes us. <laughs> You know, you don't have to speak in such a simple way to me. I already know that you can converse well enough. I stiffen up, but Amicus j jumps in for me. What are you talking about, Jackal? Oh, are we already jumping to informal language? Well, I'm simply referring to his intelligence, Wolf. I'm confused as to why he's downplaying it for me. Well, I don't know how you know anything about him. Come on, Marco. Let's head back to my room. Amicus stands and pulls me up, but Nefero stands with us, reaching out for a, for one of the white towels. That is why I'm trying to make conversation with him, but if he needs your permission to do anything, including speak, then maybe I should leave your slave alone. Amicus turns on the Kimi and not bothering to hide his anger anymore. He's not a slave. Please refrain from calling him as such. If he isn't, then he should be able to speak freely. He is able to speak freely, Jackal. Then I have to wonder why he asks your permission and stupefies his speech. It's all a bit odd, isn't it? Again, I don't know how you know anything about him. Alex told me. The Jackal grins. I note that he's using Alex's shortened name. Amicus stares in surprise. So don't worry, Marco. You can speak without worrying what I might learn. Nefero sets a paw on my shoulder, and Amicus's hackles raise. Gently but firmly, he reaches out to move Nefero's paw off my shoulder. Please do not touch my pet. Oh, so he needs permission to be touched as well? Amicus steps sideways, partially blocking me from the jackal's view. What is your concern with him, Nefero? He wants to fuck us. <laughs> he loves us. <laughs> I'm simply interested in intelligent species that I've never seen before, and, well... And pressing your buttons. Nefera reaches out over Amicus's shoulder, touching my hair and rubbing it between two finger pads, similar to what Amicus sometimes does. He is a fascinating-looking... Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the little tongue. <laughs> I start to move my my head away, but... Before I know it, Amicus has Nefero shoved up against the wall, one paw on his chest glaring into his face. The tasteful black sensory ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> I said not to touch him. His voice is low, almost too quiet for me to hear. I want to jump in somehow. Maybe push Amicus towards the door so he can so we can just leave and not cause an interstellar incident. But there's they're so big and intimidating. They, they say never to break up a dog fight. It's, <laughs> it's not healthy. Especially when they're seven feet tall. You're supposed to make loud noises, and then you're supposed to clap your hands. <laughs> and then if you need to, you can use citronella spray and, or an air horn. Citronella spray? Yeah, they don't like citronella. What? Citronella spray. What is citronella spray? Citronella is a plant. Oh. It's like a citrusy... It sounds like a brand. No, we used to grow citronella in our backyard like to keep cats away. Citronella is the brand that makes the uh, that has the sexy animal. Uh... Oh, you're thinking of a uh, fucking. Oh my gosh, what are you thinking of? It's a uh, or orange orangina. Orange, orangina. Orangina. Because it sounds like. A... I almost bought that for you. I went to some place. I almost bought it for you because I thought it'd be funny as a joke. <laughs> no, I bought it. Uh, it's good. I have had it. It is good. Yeah. I don't need the sexy giraffe and zebra to tell me that it's good, though. But they're very funny commercials. <laughs> they're just very they're, over over they're sexy. So much. They're so they're weirdly sexy. I like the one with the gay puma. It's like, <laughs> they just like they like they he splashes on his face and then just like the and the guy comes over and just like strokes his face and it's like this is an extremely gay commercial. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think it's gonna make me remember. I mean, it did apparently. Actually, it, it apparently really worked. I just I don't know. I mean, it's just an end. It's it, we're in it, we're I think we're coming out of it a little bit, but we we. I mean, there's like the H Bomber guy video that's about this a bit, but it's like we had the era of like absurdist commercials that are just trying to out weird each other. And I don't know, that one was uh, more well, memorable than most of them are. Xbox, it's a nut you can play with outside. <laughs> it's a nut. Or, or PSP or whatever. Yeah. I forgot what game it was. PlayStation. I don't what system it's it was. PlayStation Portable. It's a nut you can play with outside. Have you ever seen the little baby ice cream commercials, Keith? 
Uh, I'll no, have to show I'm you I'm those tor- guys. I know, I know the baby PlayStation commercials were horrifying doll as in uh, like a David Lynch nightmare. No, look up little baby <laughs> ice cream commercials. The brand's called Little Baby Ice Cream. The horror. It is so upsetting. It's good. I liked it a lot. I actually looked up all their commercials because I got obsessed with them. <laughs> but it, they're just very creepy. Very creepy. We'll look at them later, Keith. Don't you worry. Oh, right. Sorry. I keep forgetting that he's not a slave with the way you treat him, needing your permission for everything. He doesn't. I step forward then. Well, you need my permission. The statement just sort of slips out of my mouth, my irritation with the jackal growing along with Amicus's. Nefera's eyes widen for just a moment before his smile returns. Ah, so it is true. I knew I saw intelligence in those eyes. Despite having a canine that's a good deal larger than him, pinning him to the wall, Nefero seems quite calm. You know nothing of the way I treat him, and please do not call him a slave again. It is a front to his actual status. Again, my apologies. He did kidnap me. He looks at me. <laughs> May I touch you in a friendly manner in the future? A paw on the shoulder, an embrace even? Chemians are always physically intimate. <laughs> I stare at him. No. Amicus snorts with satisfaction, blowing back some fur on Nefera's face. Now kindly leave my pet alone in the future. He's very busy. Is he? (laughs) Again, this language that implies that you own him. It's confusing to me. Amicus growls, but Nefera doesn't seem to notice the warning. I suppose it's only natural for a slave-driving race such as your own. You believe you own everything and everyone lower on the hierarchy. Amicus's eyes widen, nostrils flaring. What? Look where his, <laughs> <laughs> Look where his eyes are looking. He's looking straight down. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Neferu. Such a good character. <laughs> He's so cheeky. <laughs> what? I'll have you know that... M- <laughs> that my servant that uh, blah, 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 blah. I'll have you know that they are servants and I do plan to change never mind it's not your place to criticize my empire Nefaris seems to take some interest in what Amicus just said pausing for only a moment before speaking again your empire didn't you say someone else was acting as the emperor The Empire belongs to all wolves, but I'll have you know that I will become the Emperor, Jackal. And keeping that in mind, you should learn to hold your tongue if you want to establish an alliance. Ah, but does the Empire belong to the servants that mine your natural resources across the dozens of planets in our galaxy? What is your issue with me? Or are you just this rude to everyone you meet? The Jackal is quiet, and Amicus just growls at him, waiting for an answer. That's when I realized that Neferu isn't even looking at Amicus's face. He's looking at... <laughs> and now that I'm... And now that I'm looking at it, I realize it's looking a bit bigger than usual. <laughs> you know, I heard rumors that the Emperor's son was a tail raiser, but honestly, I wasn't expecting you to use this moment as an opportunity. Do you simply want to get your paws on me? <laughs> <laughs> In one smooth, fluid motion, Neferu spins into Amicus, thumping his back into the other canine's front, making the big wolf grunt and puff air into the top of Neferu's head with an oof sound. Neferu leans there against the wolf, holding his big paw while the other comes up to tease at Amicus's chin. Amicus looks surprised, but he doesn't do anything to push the jackal away. Meanwhile, the jackal's rear pushes firmly against Amicus's crotch. Amicus seems frozen, staring down at the jackal. From what little I've learned about Ad- Ad- Adastrin's slang on t- the TV, Nefero had just implied that Amicus is gay. A tail raiser. <clears throat> if you were interested, you only had to ask. I know that wolven ways of flirting are rather aggressive, and even though we jackals do things differently, I can adjust. At that, Amicus glares and roughly pushes Nefero away, sending the jackal to stumble against the wall. He turns around swiftly, his grin still in place. Oh, did I get the wrong idea? I just assumed after you groped my chest and became excited. 
Nefaru gestures at down at Amicus's crotch, the wolf's erect cock still waving around a bit after the jackal had spun away. Immediately, Amicus covers himself with both paws, glaring. I did not, and you were the one to touch my pet without his permission. <laughs> Amicus looks around for his underwear, snatching it up and getting to tie it on. I quickly grab a towel and my robes, feeling completely confused as to what the hell just happened. Again, I thought he was your slave, but you're right, I should have asked for his permission. His fur was simply mesmerizing, so I forgot myself for a moment. Neferu turns to me and bows. Good day, Marco. I wish you luck in relieving your master's carnal desires. <laughs> The fairy gestures at the fumbling wolf as he tries to tie on his underwear correctly. Oop, did I do something wrong again? Always. And to you, Amicus, again, if you're interested, you only need to let me know. Are you joking with me? The fairy is already striding off, grabbing up his own underwear and loincloth as he does, not even fi finish tying it on by the time he's walking out the door. He does not care. We both stand there in silence a bit, staring at the do as the door slides shut. Then Amicus grabs up the rest of his clothes with a growl, turning to me. You all right? Uh, yeah, of course. What? Come on. And then Amicus is walking even faster than Nefaro had. I quickly follow, not bothering to put on my robe since I'm still pretty wet. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. He's great. I love him. 